Welcome to Binge Watchers, where we talk about the stories and characters we love and the shows they live in. My name is Ron, and let's talk about Season 2 of the Netflix Marvel original, Iron Fist. Before we get to the video, a quick message to everybody who's on the Binge Watchers Discord server. Um, it's... I know that I haven't been on it for a while, and it's because I've been locked out of it. I, I'm having some problem with the Google Authenticator thing. I can't log in. I can't figure it out. Uh, I'm going to figure it out somehow, but that's why I haven't been on there for like a good few weeks. So I'll figure it out soon, and then I'll rejoin all of you guys um, and talk about TV. All right, on with the video. So you might know that I wasn't a huge fan of season one of Iron Fist. I'm still pretty sure I'd rate it as the worst season of a Netflix Marvel show because so many things went wrong for me with season one. The biggest problem by far was the main character and the actor who plays him. I just didn't buy that this stupid, arrogant, child is the great warrior who had the incredible focus and strength of will to overcome all of those crazy challenges in Kun Lun. And on top of that, I thought the performance by Finn Jones was bad. It was bad. We talked previously about how each show you watch makes you a promise and how much you enjoy that show is determined in part by how well, in your opinion, that show kept that promise. With Iron Fist, I feel that one of those promises is simply delivering great martial arts fight scenes. But in season one, those fight scenes felt slow and heavily edited, so it just ended up contributing to a boring, all-around, not great season. Season two actually improves on pretty much all of those things. So first, the stories feel way more focused in this season, in large part thanks to the world building we've seen up until now with the other Netflix Marvel shows. We're much more familiar with the cast and just overall what's going on in this world. This is where having watched all of those other shows kind of pays off. The main story here deals with Davos. He grew up with Danny and Kun Lun and he was another candidate for the Iron Fist and ended up losing it to Danny. Davos is now in New York and he's a pretty straightforward villain. As he sees it, the only way to rid the world of evil is to just kill everyone that even looks at him wrong. Danny still feels a very strong connection to him, they're basically brothers, so he wants to try to save him, help him, but he also has to find a way to stop him. Around the main story, we have the supporting cast with characters like Misty Knight, Colleen Wing, Ward, and Joy Meacham. Their stories are all very closely connected to the main story, which I thought was fantastic because it made everything feel focused and worthwhile. In Jessica Jones, for example, a show that I thought had a great season one and a not at all great season two, they tended to have side stories that felt like they're pretty much a waste of time because they didn't really contribute anything to the main plot. So overall, I thought this was a much better season, much stronger season than season one, but it still had lots of problems. So first, the fight scenes were awesome. This is an action-packed season and almost every episode has some super impressive display of martial arts. I didn't feel that they had anything that matched the best fight scenes from Daredevil, but it was still pretty damn awesome. Especially Colleen's fights, I thought were fantastic. I thought those were great. The action felt fast, and it felt like these people are martial arts experts. They really stepped it up from season one. I think the best way I can describe this season as a whole is great supporting characters held back by a weak main character and great side stories held back by a weak main story. The supporting characters in this season are incredibly strong. Misty Knight, for example, is one of my favorite characters in the entire Netflix Marvelverse, and she gets a big role in this season. And they also make the very smart decision to focus more on Colleen and her friendship and partnership with Misty. At this point, if we get a Daughters of the Dragon show, I'm totally on board. The best part of season one for me was Ward Meacham. I felt that he was the best performer in that season, and he had the most interesting personal story in an otherwise very weak season. In season two, I think Ward and Joy continue to be strong characters. They're maybe the only non-ass-kicking characters, and they make up for it by being fleshed out and interesting. Although I did think that the total 180 that, that we had on Ward 
was a bit jarring. He went from villain to friend really quickly. And to round up an already really impressive supporting cast, this season also introduces Mary Walker, Typhoid Mary from the comics. And I'm not going to talk about her too much to avoid spoilers, but I'll just say that she instantly became my favorite part of the season and I really hope we get to see more of her. So you have all of these great characters, each one with an interesting story on the one hand, and then you have Danny Rand on the other. Danny is better, but he's still an insufferably stupid and childish character and the worst performer by far in the show. I feel bad saying this, but his style of acting feels like it belongs on like the bold and the beautiful or something. And because everybody else is pretty good, it just makes it worse for Danny. It makes it more obvious. I imagine that's the reason he gets less screen time in this season. It's more like he's just part of the ensemble and not the main character. I thought Davos was a pretty effective villain. He made sense, I liked him. He's not the looming, menacing doom of Wilson Fisk or Kilgrave, but he was solid. This is something else I feel that this season learned from the failures of other Netflix Marvel shows. Don't have multiple villains. Focus on one solid villain, which I feel they do here. On season one, they weren't really able to pull off the hand as this massive shadow organization, and here it's much simpler. It's just this guy who's incredibly powerful, and he's on the warpath, and Danny needs to stop him, and they pull it off. So bottom line, should you watch it? Listen, I can't say that this is some amazing season of television, and I can not say that this is the return to form that we've been waiting for since season one of Daredevil. But there are a lot of good stuff in this season. If you enjoyed anything at all about season one, you're gonna have a lot of fun with season two. The main problem here, for me at least, is that you still have a main character that kind of sucks. Personally, I find Danny Rand to be boring and annoying to watch, and he really drags down the entire show. Which is a shame, because you really have one of the strongest lineups of a supporting cast in any Netflix Marvel show. If you're a fan of these shows in general, I'd say go ahead and give season two a chance, even if you haven't watched season one. I had some fun with it. What about you? Have you watched season two of Iron Fist? What were your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And I know that I already talked about this a little bit in my Luke Cage video, but I'm still interested. Are you still excited about these Netflix Marvel shows? Do you feel that maybe they need to do something to kind of shake things up or come out with a show that's a bit different than the sort of style that they've been going with so far? What other characters would you like to see them focus on? If you're going to be talking about spoilers, please use spoiler tags in your comments. And I'd like to thank all the patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel. And if you're finding binge watchers for the first time, welcome. I'd like to invite you to join the binge watchers community. Come talk about TV with us. It's a lot of fun. Subscribe to the channel. But in any case, keep binging and I'll see you next time.